Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at T1 electricals, specifically in a retribution and how much ISK you can earn per hour. Now the nice thing about the T1 electricals is that they are very, very cheap. So for the, um, the T1s here, you can see they're 28 mil and for the T2s they're 100k. Did I say 28k? Either, sorry, so 28k and 100k. Now if we scoot up to the uh, the level threes then they obviously start increasing massively in isk and this really really eats into the amount of profit that you can make per hour and in some cases you're actually better off doing lower levels than higher levels because you can obviously run them quicker and depending on the price you're paying for your filament you can end up making more risk per hour in general so we're going to be using the retribution and the retribution for doing the electricals is wonderful and that is because the electricals give you a cap increase so as we can see here we are not cap stable at the moment but we do get a 50% increase in charge rate for our capacitor in um, T1 Abyss sites for the electricals and we also get an EM, we, we get minus to our EM resist but our weapons do thermal and EM damage so that works out really well because we'll be doing even more damage. So the fit's relatively standard we've got a small focused tech 2 pulse laser, uh, we've got a cap battery, we've got a uh, afterburner tech 2, we've got an A type thermal, we've got reactive hardener We've got a small armor repairer tech 2 and we've got a multi-spectral coating and we've also got a heat sink. Now I am doing this on two characters at the same time and on the other character that I am using I have put in the, um, the A-type small armor repairer. And for the electricals we're only going to be taking the two ammo types and that is the conflag small and scorch small pretty much don't need anything else. Now the reason I've got the two different repers is basically I wanted to basically show you the difference between the repers, the small armor repairer and the um, A type and pretty much you can manage perfectly fine with the small armor repairer but if you don't necessarily have fantastic skills you may want to go for something with a bit more um, healing per second so it's completely up to you. This fit with decent skills will barely break a sweat and if you're struggling a little bit more then obviously you can start blinging it out a bit more. So as I said I am dual boxing however this dual boxing is two separate rooms entirely so these ships are in different abyssal sites not the same site. Um, as you can see on the right hand screen we have the fire watchers and the warden. Um, the fire waters basically need to be given priority generally because they are cap sucking so anything that takes a cap from you needs to be prioritized because without cap you are going to die now these don't pose much of a threat and as you can see they do go down pretty swiftly um you can i've not even got an armor rep actually going at this moment i forgot to put it on as you can see there we've just activated it but um, I never change from scorch because scorch does em damage at long range and is pretty much the only ammo type I use unless it's a large entity. So this one we've got Karen as you can see on the left hand screen. Um, Karens can be relatively dangerous, they can do quite a lot of damage however in the lower tiers I've found that their tracking doesn't seem to be as good as within higher tiers. Now I could be wrong there but as you can see here um, we take out the cruiser and basically at the moment I'm just going straight for the cash and after I've got the cash I basically then go for Karen I barely get hit and I've, I haven't had a single decent hit from her however you can go at a slight angle to try and mitigate the guns I'm now close enough I'm orbiting at a thousand meters and we now change to conflag because this does a considerable amount more damage than the um, scorch will at closer ranges so it just takes it down a bit quicker So on the right hand screen this time we've got a devoted knight, um, again can be quite dangerous, they do suck quite a lot of cap from you but with the um, the effects from the electricals um, I'm basically generating more than enough cap. They do do a decent amount of damage however not enough to um, overcome the tank so as you can see gone for the cash and then it's basically straight into orbit range and then change into conflag just do a little bit more damage and as you can see here melting pretty quickly. 
So every so often the game will throw up something that will try and take you out. It's almost like the game feels like you've you've done it enough times and that basically it's ready to uh, to, to blow you up. And this time we've got three starvings, which can be a little bit dangerous because, again, if I run out of cap, it can be um, pretty much game over. However, I don't turn the wrapper off through the whole of this. Now, potentially to save some cap, I could have turned it off. Um, instead of going straight for the cash, I get into orbit range because basically the uh, these will charge straight at you and it's relatively easy to keep within um, the uh, conflagration damage area, so within 8k. So as you can see, they're going down pretty swift. My cap is going down quite considerably, but nothing uh, that basically we can't handle here. And then it is on to basically um, going for the cash now. I've changed back to Scorch because what's left can't break my tank and uh, it's now plain sailing again. So on the left hand screen you can see we've got one of the deep waters here. Now the deep waters aren't particularly dangerous, they are basically just a DPS soak. So all we need to do is, um, we've gone for the cache, we've got the cache. I'm currently firing uh, Scorch at the moment just to do a little bit of DPS until we get into range. I'm trying to get into orbit range and then as you can see there we've now changed to conflag because so obviously conflag does a lot more damage and um, this way we can basically just orbit uh, no risk to ourselves basically he's not going to hit you at this range and obviously with conflag loaded it's a bit quicker to go down than it would be with scorch so again it does take a good amount of time but it does go down relatively swiftly with looking about a minute and a half to two minutes to take one of these down so it is one of the longer things to take down and can be a little bit frustrating but all in all you're not at any risk of dying from this one it's just a matter of taking the time to do the dps and then obviously get it out so at the 30 runs I've done, unfortunately I only got one DED spawn and these were the Skybreakers and these went down pretty swiftly, they were really quick to take down. As you can see we've got Scorch loaded and pretty much they just melt. Hardest part is their shields but as soon as their shields have gone they, they're gone pretty much. Now if you get the Enforcer it can be a little bit more challenging because obviously they do have a little bit more DP, not DPS, they have more um, tank shield so if you do get a Drainer it can be slightly painful but just toggle the um, Armor Repairer as required to, uh, to save cap and as you can see here this one goes down really quickly. So on the right hand screen we can see we've got the direct vac. Now initially I go straight for the cash as pretty much always we've got conf uh, Scorch loaded. Now when doing this I initially forgot that they like to kite so initially he's coming in I'm doing a decent amount of damage to him and I think alright oh, I'll uh, slowbo or uh, I'll get to the gate ready for the next um, spawn and he basically starts to kite me at up to 27k. Now I can't hit a 27k so as soon as I realize what's going on basically we um, start to approach and as, as soon as we get back into range he goes down pretty swiftly but something to be aware of that you do generally have to um, sometimes chase after the odd spawn which will try and kite you and this was one of them spawns. And so the numbers. Um, crude spreadsheet here but it does the job so one times retribution in t1 electricals and this was basically the amount of isk that i earned for doing um what was it 29 um, runs here which came out at 231 million isk the time it took me was 188 minutes which worked out at uh, 1.2 million isk per minute or 73.7 million isk per hour now so say that is the average so as you can see here we got the odd um spawn i didn't get any nice uh, multiplasmids here so nothing to really bump it up we got 24 million which was a direct vac uh, bpc drop in and we got a few t3 electricals which go through about three or four million so some nice odd uh, drops but nothing outrageous because if again if you get lucky and you get a decent multiplasmid that drops every you know now and then you can sell some of them for 60 odd million so again as I said it's averaged the odd good drop I didn't get any skill books or any um, faction items here either so this is all basically just standard and again the time the average time taken was six minutes and 14 and the average site income that I was making was 7.9 million isk per site. So 
pretty decent, um, as I said, 74 million isk an hour on average over the course of three hours there. So again, it's not just I've randomly pulled just one good spawn that I've had and basically just said, all oh, right, yeah, if you times this by la 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 la, you'll get eggs. So this is the average and that was out of 29 runs. So yeah, that's pretty much what you should be looking at. Which, let's face it, the T1 electricals is pretty solid for 73 million isk. So I could do that quite comfortably on the two clients and I'd be making 140 million isk an hour. Which is, to consider it's almost risk-free because you're in high sec, you know, you're not having to uh, dock up, etc. It's it's better than zero zero really for um, for general isk ratting. So it's, it's really good income, it's really accessible and it doesn't require a huge investment in skill points. So I'll leave you with this little bit of bonus footage and if you have enjoyed the video then please drop a like, I'll be doing more of these in the near future. So as I said earlier, every so often it will just feel like the game is trying to take you out. Now the vast majority you'll find like 98% of the time it's really straightforward and easy and then all of a sudden you'll get this one spawn. Now this is a T4 Dark, this isn't necessarily what I'm talking about but it just gives you some examples. So watch the right hand screen, Karen has locked me from eight, uh, 50 kilometers away and boof, I almost get one shotted from literally the other side of the map. Now if that had been the other ship I would have been dead instantly so I was fortunate um, that, that basically it was the ship that it was and I think I got away with 200 um, structure points there so if she'd have done slightly more damage we would have been a goner and you'll find this that as I said the uh, the vast majority of spawns are relatively straightforward and easy and then all of a sudden randomly you'll just get this incredibly hard spawn where you'll get six seven um, starvings or anything that drains cap or you'll just get webbed and etc and yeah it'll just yeah, there's, it just feels like basically the game has gone right. You've had enough. It's now time to uh, to get you, and basically it does everything it can just to take you down. Now, obviously, it didn't happen quite in this one, but it was very, very close. So do bear that in mind when you are bringing ships, etc. But there are the vast majority of spawns you'll sail through with no issues, and then, so say, you'll just get this really nasty spawn which has all the right elements just to take you down. So. I prefer generally to go cheaper than more expensive and try and make it that way knowing that basically over time sooner or later whether it's a disconnect or whether it's just that really you know one in a thousand spawns that you get which you've pretty much got no chance of surviving so something to bear in mind. And so with that thank you for your time and I look forward to speaking to you soon.